A collection of card-carrying members of the two-second club has gathered in Indianapolis for a little fun and games and some fast time. Eager to enter this elite fraternity, a host of young racers. And coming up next, we'll see who's willing to pay their dues in order to join the Society of Speed Merchants. This is Trucks and Tractor Power, featuring the superstars of the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals. Welcome to Trucks and Tractor Power on the Nashville Network. Today, we're at the four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals at the Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis. Every Labor Day weekend, this city becomes a convention of speed as the U.S. Nationals roll into town to Indianapolis Raceway Park. But today, we're across town for a form of drag racing at its dirtiest. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Lee, and we have a convention of speed in our own right here at the State Fairgrounds today as some of the best mud racers in the world have gathered for side-by-side -side competition. And here with more on that is Army Armstrong. Gary, you're exactly right. Out of South Florida, Al Stebbins comes up to represent the Chevrolet camp as the world-famous Hoosier Mao is playing host to a mecca of mud maniacs who have migrated from all over the country. I told you about Stebbins. He's up from Florida with Chevrolet for horsepower. I'm standing next to a vehicle that came all the way from New Hampshire. He's going to be relying on the Ford to make the horsepower for him, and you can't count out the Chrysler boys. They'll be represented by Buddy Curley out of North Carolina. We're ready to go first round action. Back to you, Gary Lee. Let's find out today who's going to be the king of mud racing. Army, the first group is standing by ready for competition in the Class 6 Open Unlimited. The paddle tires, 180 feet of mud, a single pass against the clock. The best overall time will win. So we should have an excellent shootout here in the infield of the famed mile at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. And there is a good shot of the super trooper, Tom Martin. He, like all mud racers, has his own idea of how to stick the horsepower to the track. And earlier, Army took a look at the different types of transmissions in this form of racing. Well, Gary, while walking through the pit area here at Indianapolis, we were looking for similarities and differences in some of these mud racers, and I found something that I find to be kind of interesting. Tom Martin, world champion on the indoor mud circuit, relies on a cone-built transmission. Now, this transmission basically started life as a what they call a shorty power glide. You could actually buy this transmission on a Chevrolet a few years ago. This one's been modified by the Cone Company. There's another company in California called Linco. They designed this transmission you'll find in the Gary Olstein vehicle specifically for racing. This particular transmission you're going to find only in funny cars and dragsters until now, and they brought it over to mud racing. So whether it's high tech out of Detroit or a guy out of California trying to figure it out, everybody's trying to figure out how to put the horsepower to the ground. And when we asked these guys specific questions about their transmissions, they just smiled at us and walked away. This could be a good secret. Back to you, Gary Lee. And no one likes to give away any of their advantage as we take a look at the Beef Deep Blues. This is Big Al A. She was victorious just a week ago in Bloomsburg, and he is also a member of the Two Second Club. He runs that three-speed Linko that you were talking about, Army, in his Chevy S10 with the big 512 cubic inch blown Rodeck, and he pulls alongside the Magician, and that is Keith Mitchell. That's the Pontiac Funny Car with the nitrous-injected power plant. Al Esch is famous for his childhood heroes. We were telling you earlier, a lot of people talked about it. His heroes were the Blues Brothers, Jolie and Jake and Elwood. Oh, he's a fan. Oh, and he here. turns out a great ride. The Whoa, look at the other lane. all over the place. But a great ride for Big Al and Beefy Blue. Look at that, 2.674. Oh, does he throw down the gauntlet here in Indianapolis? And Gary, you must remember in this sport, three seconds is the magic time. Anything under three is fantastic, and he starts it off with a 2.6. A certified member of the two-second club. He lays down a 2.67. He gets on top of the mud. Just an excellent run for Big Al Ash. And Beef Deep Blue, he has to be ecstatic. Let's go trackside. Big Al and Army Armstrong. A 2-6 run today. you got to be tickled to death with this thing. I'm very happy with that one. I think I messed up. I went into high gear, and I didn't really want to. Typical racer. Never satisfied, are you? 2-6 is awesome. It is a good pass. I'm happy with that. I hope it holds. I hope it holds. <laughs> 
Well, that certainly serves as something to shoot for as we take a look at the next matchup. T. Ray out of Louisville, Kentucky, about a two-hour drive south of Indianapolis in TNT, and he pulls alongside Ben Nievenheis, and he is out of Ontario, Canada. That gives us an international flavor now. The Canadians came over. They're going to see how they go against the uh, south of the border guys, if you will. One of the things I noticed is that 267 is posted as quick time, and that's going to be tough to beat. Far in a far lane has got a little bit of a... Oh, oh he almost bounces Whoa, out of bounds. Tag. Well, they got him halted before they made contact. A little bit of a windscreen in the driver right in front of him. And as soon as they go through the finish line, they kind of kick that up out of their way. I like that idea. 3.54, not the time that the Canadian was looking for. Another member of the two-second club, 2.93. That would be a good run. There's that windscreen that you were talking about, Army, to protect the driver as all the mud is being tossed up from the uh, front drive on these four-wheel drive units. You gotta remember, those front tires are slinging that mud back at you at about seven to 8,000 RPM. And he almost got out of bounds there in that left lane. A two-second club run, but still not quick enough when Big Al lays down the 267 right off the bat. Watch the bounce at the finish line. That cost him a little bit of precious time. This guy out of the Bluegrass State laid down a good shot, but a little bounce right here, see? That That's definitely just cost enough it. to but, put your stomach in your throat. Yeah, but Gary, the first two runs are both two-second runs. We might be seeing history here today before this is all over. And we are seeing a super-fast track here in Indianapolis. Buckling up and getting ready for his pass is New Hampshire's Dave Ray. We'll see him in action as we return to the Indiana State Fairgrounds. We are back at the Indiana State Fairgrounds in Indianapolis, where Ford Trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals it's all a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. Hi, everybody. Gary Lee along with Army Armstrong. We take a look at Tim Pearson out of North Vernon, Indiana, down south of here, about an hour and a half drive, and shameless. And he pulls alongside Midnight Magic out of New Hampshire. This is Dave Ray. Of course, we talked about him at the start of the show. Dave with that 27 Ford and the 572 cubic inches. They're still trying to go quicker than a 267 to go into the lead. The magic number is three. The track goes back together awfully good after every run. Good ride. Oh. Excellent run. Let's check the time. Where's the time for Dave? We don't have it yet. And Ray got up on 277. Oh, that is right. second fast. 2779. That is second fast this afternoon. Well, an 816 had some problems in the far lane, but three runs now, three sub, three second runs. Now we take a look on the starting line. A good shot of the Ford power plant of Gary Osteen's Dirty Bird. And earlier, Army talked to Osteen about why he uses Ford power in this event. Gary, as you well know, when we talk about motors, we keep talking the name Keith Black. You usually hear about Keith Black, you're thinking about a Chrysler Hemi setup. You also hear about Rodek. That's John Rodek out of California. Basically, what that is is aluminum version of the big box Chevrolet engine. Well, we may have found a bird of a different color walking through the pit area. Gary Olstein rolls out today with the Iron Block Ford. Now, Gary, a lot of people don't think this is a racing engine. They think it ought to be used as a boat anchor, but you're out here thinking you can thump these guys. Tell me about the engine. Ford Motorsports come up with a good SVO block. It's got a lot more beef in the bottom of it, and we bore it out, put a different stroke in it, put a nice set of uh, Luna modified heads on it. We put a Linko in a good crowler clutch behind it we put in a kcd chassis we try to get about 1800 to 2000 horses out of this motor then we try to put it all onto the ground and make it all pay off for us well gary it's kind of interesting they've set a couple of world records right now so what i'm hearing in the pit area ford believes they are going to be a player today back to you we shall see it's the dirty bird and olstein draws mr four-wheeler Jim McConville in his 23 Alter T, and he has the uh, big blowing alcohol Chevy. This could be one of the classic races we have ever seen. McConville, he's the man that brought the supercharged engine into the sport. He's kind of a loner, a privateer, if you will. He stays to himself. Olsteen, happy-go-lucky guy out of South Florida. Ford in Olsteen, the Dirty Bird. Mr. Four-Wheeler, powered by Chevrolet. So far, everybody's getting into two-second bracket. We can have a side-by-side, -side too, here, Gary. Look at that run. Look at that run. The gym turns in. An excellent ride. Let's wait for the time. That was a quick one. Both There's of them. Look at the dirty bird. Look at this. 2.677 for Olstein. And let's wait for the time. Look at that. Look that, at that. You have just witnessed a new world record. 
592, a world record. Boy, what a rocket ride by both of the drivers. Side by side, history run right here is Mr. Four Wheeler rocking and a rolling. A classic run. He got a good hole shot, got on top the mud, and turns in that spectacular 2.592. It's a world record. Let's go trackside to Army Armstrong. Let me be the first to tell you the new world record holder with a 259. Congratulations. Thank you, Army. Thank you. Been working a long time for this. When you line up against a guy like Olstein, you know you got to literally pull the trigger. You both did a great job. Congratulations once again. Thank you, sir. Well, this warrants another look at a record run here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Mr. Four Wheeler in the four lane lays down a 2.59. And you know, he was bouncing just a little bit and sets that world record. Well, let's go down and talk to the guy in the other lane, Gary Osteen. Well, Gary, I tell you what, it took a world record to beat you today. It probably did, but we're coming on strong, though. What about the ride? A lot of bounce on the other end. It was. It got fairly rough there on the other end. It kind of pulled and lifted a little bit, so I backed off right at the finish line to keep it from bouncing so hard. Everything happened so fast in two or three seconds. I don't know how those guys can really tell you what exactly happened. Yeah, if you interview me, I'd just say I shut my eyes and held on. Al Stebbins coming up next. Stebbins in rapid transit, and there's a look at Doug Marsh in hard times. Now, Stebbins runs around with Olstein. Let's see if Olstein may have taught him something on his run in front of him. Meanwhile, they just keep getting quick and fast. Look at the competition. Wow. Now, once again, he got up on top that mud at 2.7. We're watching his nine. Three seconds is magic. Everybody, so far, every race has had one vehicle under two. Problem there with Doug Marsh, Army. I believe he lifted or, or blew a supercharger. What happened? Explo exploded a supercharger. Safety crews right there. Boy, another time, another day for Doug. Well, let's watch again now on the ISO camera. Watch the hard times Jeep yeah. right there. Yeah. Probably and hung he says, with all this mud, I think I'll stay in the cockpit. You guys just pull right. me out. H hung a valve and banged it. and going to stay. As Marty uh, Brown, the singer, would say, staying high and dry. Well, there is your world record for Jim McConville, 259. Al Ash is still second in Beefy Blue. Gary Osteen, the Dirty Bird, at 267. Oh, look at that. Three members of the two-second club, including the world record run. As Doug Marsh gets a toe back to the pit area, we can show you the fastest mud in the world. More coming up. Stay with us. And the fans hang on the fence in anticipation here at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. A good crowd on hand, and some are uh, walking through the show and shine area of the Fall Jam, retaking a moment to stop and watch the action. There's Tom Martin, the Super Trooper. We talked about his cone shorty power glide transmission earlier in the show, and he goes up against Gene Johnson in Tyler's Toy. Gene is also a member of the Two Second Club, and Tom Martin is a four-time indoor champion. He can lay down a superb run. Martin turns on those blue lights that indicates he's got blood in his eyes, really. When those blue lights come on, he said he's thinking about one thing. It's 180 feet away. It's called the finish line. Let's see how quick he goes through. We'll take a record run to win here in Indianapolis, and let's take a look at the time for the Super Trooper. 2.874. A very fast track. Not quite fast enough to uh, take over the lead. And there's a 3.485 for Gene Johnson. Gary, we are seeing history. So far, there has been a, at least one two-second pass in every race. That is historic right now. Let's see if they keep doing it. And there's a look at uh, Fred Wilhite's pit. He'll be coming up momentarily. But right now, let's go trackside and talk to the Super Trooper. Tom, a 287. I think all the bad boys are here today. Yeah, you know, Unfortunately, I think our horsepower might have hurt us today. We really cranked it up hard, and it just spun out of the hole, you know, and then it charged good at the end, but I think we blazed them a little too much on the starting line. And speaking of the starting line, a pair of unique cars, a 23 Ford and a 48 Fiat. Jerry Schofield in Whiplash, the 23 Ford with the big blowing Chevy, and he goes up against Decatur, Illinois' Fred Wilhite. Well, we're in Indianapolis, Indiana. We opened the show talking about drag racing. Years ago, these were the two most popular body styles. A 48 Fiat closest to us, the pit. Whiplash in the far side, a 23 Ford Roadster. Still racing. Whoa, we got a problem. Oh, Will Heights in big trouble. He goes across his lane into the uh, opposing lane. Almost collected. Jerry 
And Jerry had to take evasive action. He's been disqualified. Fred will be disqualified. And he looks like he might get that four-wheeler hung up. So double disqualifications. Wow, that was close, Gary. Let's, let's just kind of watch this and see what happened. I'm on the side. I couldn't tell. He hooked a rut. Bam. Well, I said that Jerry took evasive action. I think he was actually headed for the out-of-bounds marker before Fred got into his lane. So both drivers have been disqualified. Let's go back to Army Armstrong. Gary, I think we've just seen a classic case of something that's called hooking a rut. Am I correct? Uh, yeah, it uh, bit about the same time I caught the rut, and it was all over. I was just there for the ride. And what a ride it was, Gary. That'll get your attention for sure, but fortunately no damage done to either one as we take a look at Stanley Trimble and Bill's Rat. And that, of course, is a fiberglass Jeep funny car body. And he pulls up against Buddy Curley in well, Snoot. Let me tell you something. Buddy Curley sponsored by world-famous Curly's Barbecue is one of the baddest in the sport. This is the first time I've had a chance to see him. He relies on Chrysler for horsepower out of North Carolina. Carolina's in a far lane, Kentucky in a near lane. This could be another sub three, Gary. Let's see Where if it can happen. Where did that nickname Snoop? Whoa, look at that top end charge. Well, remember, they're not racing each other. They're racing the clock, and that was an excellent ride for Snoop. A problem there, though, in the Jeep at 3.534. And let's wait and get this time. Look at that. A new second place, 2.622. What a road. The top end was just phenomenal. The right lane loses a head gasket. That's where the smoke comes from. But meanwhile, the left lane, boy, that's better than a blue ticket ride at Disney World right there. Oh, what a great ride as he puts... Snoot in second place in the standings at 2.622. Well, the top end is just awesome. Well, as he shoots out of that mud pit in the shutdown area, we're in Indianapolis, and this four-wheel and off-road jamboree is being dominated by Mr. Four-Wheeler. We're coming back. Stay with us. Welcome back to Indianapolis, Indiana, where Ford Trucks present the Penda four-wheel and off-road Jamboree Fall Nationals, a part of the BF Goodrich Performance Series. These Jamborees offer a host of activities for the truck lover, as well as the entire family. And to find out when a Jamboree will be in your area, call or write the Special Events Promotion Company. It has been a fast day, and there is a look at the fastest of the fast. The new world record, Jim McConville at 2.592. Earlier, we had uh, drivers taking a shot at that, and this is Jackson, Alabama's Rick Milstead in the blowing crazy 33 Crown Victoria. A 2.798 put him eighth overall, only good for eighth. Also, earlier today, Steve Barman in chemical reaction in the far lane with that big 540 cubic inch blowing Chevy goes up against Doug McClung in the Fat Cat. Steve turned an impressive 2.78, and that was seventh quick overall. But a guy who's had all kinds of problems today was none other than Ron Penson Tater. Now, we've seen him dominate the cut tire class, but sometimes in the paddles, well, he just simply got out of shape today. Right there, a disqualification for Ron Pence in Tater. So now we are ready for our final combatants, including Dan Brown in Top Gun. That is the fiberglass Jeep body and parked alongside Tom Meents in Let's Boogie. Now, Meents normally drives Shake Me, but he tore up that car in a grinding crash, and he had to borrow a car from Tony Ferrodi. And Ferrodi says, I've got the car. You bring your engine and drivetrain over. Let's take it together and see what happens. That's exactly what we're going to see right now. I wonder what's going through his mind. Is it like an old pair of shoes that you, know, you just get comfortable with your car? If so, he might have his hands full. If not, no, no, no. Guy not worried about uh, he knows how to drive these pits. <laughs> Woo. And a good time. Not quite quick enough, though. Sixth quick overall at 2.751. And Army, that means that everybody in the top 10 has better 2.9. Let's take a look at the final standings. A world record for Jim McConville and Mr. Four Wheeler. Buddy Curley takes second in Snoot. Third is Big Al Ish and Beef D Blue. An incredibly fast field today. Let's go trackside and interview our winner. Gary, we told you when it started we were going to find out who the best was in the world. Well, it took a world record to do it. Jim McConville, congratulations. That had to be a thrill for you. 
That was a nice ride. The run itself, did, did, was it any different than any other run you made? You know, your professional mud racer, was, could you feel that being a better run than others or, you know, what? Well, when I, uh, when I first lined up, I didn't think it was going to be a very good run because there wasn't nothing in the track to really hook to. But when I got out to big end, you know, it felt like it pulled good and hard the whole way. Congratulations, young man. You're first in pay line. You're the guy with the world record. Thank you. Well, Army, maybe with all the prize money Jim won today, he'll buy himself a new hat for our next television interview. Our congratulations to Jim, the fastest race ever in this type of motorsports competition. So for Army Armstrong, I'm Gary Lee. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week on Trucks and Tractor Power. Now here's news, an exciting video release from Diamond V Sports. Once again, it's time for that death-defying dance step called Shake, Battle, and Roll. Call 1-800-438-3939 to order Shake, Battle, and Roll 2. It's a 70-minute thrill ride featuring the movers and shakers of truck and tractor pulling, the nitrous-powered warriors of mud racing, and the high-flying dogfighters of monster truck combat. Shake, Battle, and Roll 2 is the ultimate test of speed and strength. It's crunch time once again for the all-stars of mud, monsters, and pulling and Shake, Battle, and Roll 2. To order by credit card, call 1-800-438-3939 or send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to the address in your screen. Ask for a free Diamond Fee catalog. That's 1-800-438-3939. And while you're ordering, pick up the new Trax and Tractor Power t-shirt. The design features monsters, mud, and pulling right from the TV show. Call 1-800-438-3939.